Hi guys, Zach Duag here, and this is my most comprehensive guide about collision detection types. So far, we've learned a lot about collision detection, and we've built demo program for the types point to point, point to circle, and circle to circle. If you haven't watched these videos yet, I really encourage you. I'll leave the link below in the description. There's, if you don't have the previous knowledge, then it might be hard to move on. Okay, what are we going to learn today? Today, I want to share with you what I learned about the collision det detection type rectangle to rectangle. You'll meet this type in many games and you'll see it much more than circle to circle or point to point. Very often in your game, you need to use a bounding box. If you forgot what a bounding box is, here's a reminder. A bounding box is an invisible box around your sprite that players can't see. And this box is being checked for collision. And by the way, exactly this type of collision detection type, rectangle to rectangle, I implemented to the game Cat and Mouse, where I spent hours to debug it. This video is also available below. Check it out if you want to avoid my mistakes and see how important it is to select the right type of collision detection for each case even before you start building your game. Also, I'll show you how to make your code more DRY style or reusable. Programmers call it refactoring and DRY means don't repeat yourself. Okay, enough talking, let's do something. Okay, as always, the best way to understand something is build something and visualize it. So let's create two rectangles, let's make them different colors and be able to move and prevent them from flowing out of the screen. Here are the two objects with our rectangle parameters, like their positions, width, height, and mode. Here I can move one of my rectangles around the screen. Here it checks if the rectangle is moving behind the screen borders. We just push it back then. It all clear, right? Now let's take a look at my program. I have two places with very similar commands here when I check if my rectangle is inside the borders. And here is the rule. Once you see something very similar more than once, it might just be the opportunity to refactor your code and make it better. So how do you refactor it and make it more reusable? We just have to create another function and move the logic there. So like make it responsible for this type of behavior. Also
Also, by refactoring your code and separating part of its logic to another function, you implement the abstraction concept. If you don't remember or don't know what abstraction is, then I've put another link in the description where I explain it very thoroughly. So please check the description below and watch it. Now let's do it. So I'm creating a new function. Let's call it window border, which has one argument. And let's move it, this logic to this function. Then I can delete all these lines and instead just call this function for any object that I want to apply this logic to. Look, I see another good candidate for refactoring. These are our commands that move our sprites or rectangles around. Now we can move rectangles by pressing some keys that we predefined. So what if I want to add a third sprite and move it around as well? One way is to copy and paste this code and make some changes here and there. But another approach is, I already mentioned, is to abstract this into a separate reusable function. Let's do it. Now let's even add a speed argument so we'll be able to assign different speeds to different sprites. Okay, we need to fix our window border function here since we represented new values for the speed. And now once you want to add another sprite that you want to control by your keyboard, all you have to do is just pass his name and argument and the keys you want to control it with. And you will be using the same function so your code has less lines and it is more readable and clean. All right, now as always, for better understanding, let's add some helpful information on the screen. To better understand how to detect collision for this type, look at these two rectangles. So what we need to count here, it really depends on the direction. Or better to say, from what direction these two rectangles touch each other. In one case, it will be from the bottom side of rectangle 1 and top side of the rectangle 2. In the other case, it might be the left side and the right side. And for every case, we would have to use the correct coordinates. What are these coordinates? You remember that in left 2D, the coordinates of the rectangles mean it's on the top left corner. Let's print them on the screen. For this purpose, again, we use abstraction and create a separate function for that since we're still going to use it for another rectangle too. Okay, let's fix the color. And I also think this argument is too long for just one line, so let's make it a variable.
Now, for better understanding, let's calculate and print out all other coordinates of the rectangle's corners. Okay, now I think it's clear what we have to calculate in our collision detection function. First, let's do it only for the x coordinates. And for better visualization, let's change the mode for our rectangles once they collide. Okay, you see so far for the x-coordinates, it works. Now let's add the y-coordinates calculation. Okay, see, it works. You, lear you just learned another collision detection type. Okay, friends, today we learned about one more collision detection type. Also, we learned and practiced one very important concept called refactoring. I hope you found this video helpful, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, and see you next time. Bye!